Good morning. Welcome, proud parents, grandparents, siblings, partners, husbands, wives, family members, and friends of our graduates. We appreciate the support you've given our graduates throughout their journeys. Thank you for being here, and thank you for those who are watching us through our live stream. I have the privilege and honor to now call to order the 40th commencement exercises of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Welcome to our dedicated faculty, our staff, our trustees, alumni, and our special guest awardees. And most importantly, welcome and congratulations to the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design's class of 2022. Last night, I told you, the world is your oyster. I have my oyster. And now today, it's your time to create your pearls. There's something special about taking time to mark life's transitions and celebrate with ceremony. Commencement is such an occasion it marks the end of your formal education and the beginning of your life as a creative professional, which is defined by continued learning in our ever-changing world. Together, we began this journey. I as a new president and you as new college students. Our time together has been an extraordinary experience for many reasons. Together, we faced the unknown. Together, we figured out how to move forward, even though everything felt uncertain. Together, we found ways to connect, despite the barriers of masks, distancing, and virtual making. Our time together has been marked by the symbol of the ampersand. As artists and designers, we appreciate a symbol that can hold so much meaning in such a simple shape. And I want to share with you why the ampersand is a powerful symbol for me. Many of you may not know that I am a twin. I have been part of an and since birth. Being a twin is an incredibly special relationship because there was an and that we shared. Michael and Susan. Susan and Michael. Like many of you, over time, I sought to declare myself as an individual, to be seen as my own person, to further be defined apart from my older brother by 11 months, and my beloved twin sister. Yes, my parents had three children in one year. That seeking of independence begins in earnest as a teenager and continues as a young adult. It's a time for you to consider and explore who you are. And this important work happens throughout your college journey especially at an art and design school. This is where you explore your creative work, a way to define, refine, and align your own singular voice, a unique vision, a personal identity as a human and as an artist and designer. And this has led to the culmination of your work within your senior thesis, you've declared yourself. As a person, as a creative, and the launch of a lifetime journey of imagining and making. And there's more. As you think about shaping yourself, this is a difficult journey within, and it crystallizes your individual nature. It certainly did for me when I moved 500 miles away from my family and became the singular Mike instead of being part of Susan and Michael. And what I discovered, that after the work that you do in these years of intentionally creating yourself, it makes room for the power of the ampersand to show up 
in new ways. When I realize there's more power and possibility when I turn the me to we, when we collaborate, when we consult, when we coach, when we share, when we listen, when we actively embrace being part of a community. For all of those years, I didn't want to be part of an ampersand. I eventually realized the and is where the magic happens. And I hope this is what I brought to you when we made the symbol as part of our first years together. It's a symbol that binds us and expands our horizon. The ampersand declares who we are, a small and mighty college community that shares intentionally with both an and in our thinking. The ampersand is a symbol of inclusion, a statement that all ideas are important and essential, which invites collaboration, cooperation, inspiration, and results in collective impact. The ampersand holds disparate viewpoints that are once the seeds of connection and the harvesting of innovation. It's a symbol that makes room for everyone's voice, everyone's idea, and everyone's perspective. The amper stand invites nimbleness and flexibility in our thinking. It promotes the affirmative and the additive, as in, yes, that's a great idea, and yet, here's another. And it points to the distinct power of art that pulls us through times of division, and by its very nature, the ampersand unites. It's a symbol that empowers the present and opens up our future. And it's you, our creatives who are adaptable, additive, and create expansive ways of thinking that will drive transformation. And this is what our world most needs now. In your time here, you were able to experiment, grow from critique, test your limits, and learn new ways of thinking. You and your peers each worked through assignments and projects and developed incredible foundational leadership skills. You indeed learned to see differently. The years you spent here enriched your own work and created new ways of seeing and being. Your growth now enriches us all. You are resourceful, you are remarkable, you are reflective. You have made a meaningful difference in what you've created here at this college. As creatives, you're always thinking, what is? What if? And how can it be better? I look forward to seeing how you continue to grow and push yourselves as you begin your what's next. Hopefully that future includes keeping the idea of the ampersand alive as you forge new creative communities and that you continue to find inspiration from your PCAD faculty, mentors, and peers. It's with warmest wishes we remain by your side. Go explore your paths and fulfill the great possibilities that are now yours to claim. Keep in touch with each other, with your professors and your mentors. Know this community, this campus, will always be a place you can call home. I look forward to celebrating your accomplishments as distinguished alumni. On behalf of the staff, and especially from your faculty, it has been a privilege and a pleasure to have you in our lives. I feel fortunate to be able to mark this moment with you and have the opportunity to bid you fair farewell. And as my twin sister likes to remind me, even though we live 500 miles apart, she says, you are always a part of me. And as I told you last night, you will always be my oysters. My oysters. My oyster.
Good morning, fellow board members, President Mullah, faculty and staff. Good morning, graduates of the class of 2022 and your families and friends. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I want to offer each of you our most special congratulations. You stand ready to launch your amazing careers. I've seen research that predicts your generation, Gen Z, will have an uh, average of five different career paths and as many as 17 jobs in your lifetime. From my perspective, that sounds a lot more exciting than just settling into one job or even one profession for 35 to 40 years. Wherever your career takes you, you deserve to be surrounded by colleagues with the same passion, curiosity, and thirst for the learning and exploring that will propel you forward. I would argue that if nothing else, the pandemic has taught us the need for and value of adaptability. Fortunately for all of us, we will hear from one of the foremost authors in the future of work field, Heather McGowan, in just a few minutes, who well knows the importance of adaptability. Unlike many of you, uh, many of your generation, as artists, you already know how to approach the state of uncertainty defining our future. You already see differently. You have proven your restless need to challenge the status quo, to stretch artistic and design conventions that no longer fit the evolving cultures and transforming perspectives in a shrinking and intermingling world. You all no doubt have heard of Banksy, the described career graffiti writer and painter decorator. But did you know that between 2003 and 2005, while you were all mere tots, he snuck some of his works into several top museums, MoMA, the Met, the Tate, and the Louvre, and hung his specially messaged art Amidst, amidst their existing art collections. He acknowledged he even consulted biographies of Harry Houdini to get ideas of how to sneak into the museum with his works of arts, some of which were not that small at all. In some cases, it took hours for his pieces to be discovered. One fell down. In others, it took days. Ask why he carried out the pranks Banksy says simply, I thought some of the paintings were quite good. That's why I thought, you know, put them in a gallery. Otherwise, they would just sit at home and no one would see them. While I don't advocate trying Banksy's strategy, I do encourage you to find ways to boldly make your place in the world of art and design. Your contributions to the field you are embracing will continue to be exceptional. You have a chance to enter the workforce and lend your vision and reimagination as we identify paths forward. Become the new agents of change in the visual arts. Conceive your own jobs. Engineer new ways to share and develop your personal means of uniquely expressive artistic and design statements. I am so glad that we have this opportunity to celebrate together. I wish you well and look forward to watching your futures unfold. Your professional journeys have begun. Please remember that you are and always will be a part of our PCAD family. Don't lose track of us, and we promise not to lose track of you. Megan, please join me at the podium to introduce our first Distinguished Alumni Award. Dr. Vukok Nguyen demonstrates what it is to truly be a Renaissance man. 
His holistic sensibilities lead to artwork that elevates and enlightens with a global, global viewpoint as well as serving as physician who practices medicine that cares for the patient's whole selves. Vu draws from his Vietnamese heritage and American experience to explore what it means to be a human being in this changing world. From his musicality to his painterly meditations to his evocative constructions, he challenges the viewer to consider the role of art in addressing what cannot be said. He serves as an inspiration for our creative community, demonstrating how creativity manifests across mediums, personifying the lifelong work of an artist. By extending his artistic sensibilities to the inspired care of others, his commitment to wellness in all of its forms betters the community and our country with admirable integrity and steadfast service. He represents leadership and vision in integrating art and health into powerful and impactful ways that the world is just beginning to understand as we utilize this convergence as a healing tool during the pandemic. Because he represents the inventive leadership, artistic impact, and modern professional practice as a creative today, we are honored to celebrate him as Pennsylvania College in Art and Design's 2022 Distinguished Alumnus. Although he is not able to be with us in person today as he is presenting his work in Norway, I will accept this award on his behalf. May his work inspire our newest alumni today and for generations to come. The college's highest award, the Medal of Honor, recognizes those who've made significant achievements in the field of art, design, creativity, culture, education, and industry, and within their communities. This year, we have two recipients for this prestigious award. I would now like to formally introduce one of our graduating seniors, who is a 2017 graduate of McCaskey High School, as an illustration major, Henry Aiden Rhodes to the podium to present our first candidate. Dr. Damaris uh, Rao, please come forward. Uh, Dr. Damaris Rao, you are an energized champion for urban education with a fierce devotion to equity for all students. Your passionate work for nearly 40 years as a public educator has been transformative, especially in the lives of those who might not otherwise have had support. Your belief that education is the key to solving community challenges has been the hallmark of your tenure and you have served as a tremendous role model in the ways that you support and invigorate school systems and communities with a highly personal touch. Your vision and leadership have made a meaningful and transformational difference in so many lives as you work to address any inequities and enlist a village to ensure each and every student's own success. Guided by the belief that education is a gateway out of poverty, which was informed by your own personal journey within the foster care system, you are passionate about developing foundational skills in elementary education and helping high school students envision their future as college students and beyond. Your devotion to effecting reforms in state education funding will carry forward your work to better the lives of future generations. You have both personally and professionally made a significant difference in so many students and educators' lives, and for this we are forever grateful. Members of the Board of Trustees, President Mola, graduating students, parents, families, faculty, staff, and guests, I'm pleased to present Dr. Damaris Rao for Pennsylvania College of Art and Design's Medal of Honor.
The Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design wishes to recognize Dr. Damaris Rao with this distinctive citation to honor her visionary work and advocacy. Whereas, Dr. Rao, you are a passionate champion for urban education and equity for all students. And whereas you have worked nearly 40, four decades as a public educator, empowering and challenging the lives of generations of students. Now it be it resolved, the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design hereby gratefully acknowledges your accomplishments. And further be it resolved, the Board of Trustees acknowledges your fierce advocacy for equity for all. And further be it resolved, the Board of Trustees fully endorses Dr. Rao as a recipient of the Medal of Honor approved and presented by this president of the college. This is duly adopted, the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania College of Art, the 6th of May, 2020. Dr. Damaris Rao, I humbly bestow upon you Pennsylvania College of Art and Design's Medal of Honor with all rights, privileges, distinctions, thereunto appertaining in token of which I present you this medal in citation. Dr. Rao. First, congratulations, graduates. Uh, this is a very special day. I want to thank all of you, the Board of Trustees the, of the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, President Mola, administration, faculty, and staff for presenting me with the college's Medal of Honor. I am humbled to receive this honor from such a distinguished institution. As you have said, my life's work has focused on educational equity for historically underserved and low-income students. I believe students from all socioeconomic levels should have the opportunity to develop their creativity and to participate in the arts. Ensuring that the arts are intentionally inclusive and that everyone is welcomed and respected is the work we must all commit to so that every, pers every person is included and can live a creative, vibrant, and art-filled life. Thank you again to the Board of Trustees, President Mola, the administration, faculty, students, and staff for all you do to make art accessible to all. Thank you. Mr. Scullin, please come forward. A member of the Board of Trustees, graduating students, parents, family, faculty, and staff, I'm pleased to present Mr. Tom Scullin for Pennsylvania College of Art and Design's Medal of Honor. I would now like to formally ask Mike Wilmer, class of 1986, and mentee of Mr. Scullin, to come to the podium and present this candidate for the college's Medal of Honor. <laughs> Tom Scullin, you are embedded in the DNA of this college. As one of the founding artists of this institution, your vision of creating an educational opportunity for students has grown and flourished with your devotion, shaping both the academic and physical foundations that continue to serve us today. For nearly four decades, you shouldered multiple roles from teaching, to finance, to maintenance, to ensure this college kept the lights on literally. You crafted a creative life devoted to shaping the learning of your students and their formation as professional artists. Tom, you have earned so much gratitude for what you share and what you inspire. As a devoted teacher, painter, and mentor, you model the ideal life of a working artist with your boundless curiosity and prolific creativity, pushing yourself and your students to create new ways of seeing differently. 
Your life's work serves as inspiration for generations of students you've taught and those who will come after because of what you've built. I am delighted to present Tom Scullin to receive the college's Medal of Honor. Tom Scullin, you showed the path of seeing, making, creating, and giving that all we aspire to embody. You are the exemplar of what it is meant to be an artist with your work imbuing your life. We are here in part because you kept the leap of faith, the bold courage and leadership in creating a college of art and design around a student-centered experience. We are forever obliged and grateful and we honor your beloved Zelda, who danced alongside you with your work, vision, and journey to create a lasting legacy for this college. It's with deepest gratitude the College of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design is proud to honor you in your inspirational teaching and creating with the 2022 Medal of Honor. The Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design wishes to recognize Mr. Tom Scullin for his distinctive resolution and to honor his creative leadership and vision. Whereas, Tom, you were one of the seven founders of this college and served as a professor for no, more, nearly 40 years, growing the college from a diploma-granting Pennsylvania School of the Arts to the associate's degree-granting Pennsylvania School of Art and Design, and finally, the BFA granting Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. And whereas you are an acclaimed artist in your own right, continuing to push yourself to see differently, and whereas you were a devoted teacher and mentor to generations serving as an exemplar of what it's meant to be an artist, your work imputing your life. Now be it resolved that the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design hereby gratefully acknowledges the many accomplishments of Mr. Tom Scullin, and be it further resolved that the college acknowledges the inspirational example set by you for all students, faculty, and staff. Be it further resolved the Board of Trustees fully endorses Mr. Scullin as a recipient of this distinct Medal of Honor and approved by me, the president of the college. Duly adopted by the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design the sixth day of May, 2020. By the authority granted by me, by the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art, in recognition of your outstanding service, I bestow upon you, Mr. Scullin, the college's highest medal, with all rights, privileges, distinctions, thereunto appertaining, in token of which I present you this medal in citation. Now we come to a very special portion of our commencement exercises. It's the custom at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design to present honorary doctoral degrees to individuals who have made remarkable contributions to the arts, society, and whose achievements represent the standard of excellence to which this college is committed. This year, we have the pleasure of honoring two longtime leaders, supporters, and a cheerleader of the college. Mr. Robert A. Brandt, Jr. I am now pleased to call forward Mr. Brandt and Ms. Audrey Carter, the chairperson of the Board of Trustees, who will present this honor.
Once again, members of the Board of Trustees who've had the pleasure of working with Bob, faculty who've had the pleasure of knowing Bob, and students, many of you who have seen Bob. Hello, family of Bob. I am pleased to present Mr. Robert A. Brandt, Jr. as a candidate for the honorary degree. This is Pennsylvania College of Art and Design's most distinguished award. Bob, we are delighted to honor you today. Like Walt Whitman, and then lyrically, Bob Dylan, you contain multitudes. A man of action and introspection, you are a curious seeker of knowledge and a model of integrity, inspiring generations with your drive, passion, and devotion to quality. Your commitment to excel is unparalleled, results-driven, and unfailingly direct. Your work ethic inspires those around you to rise to their best selves in every aspect of their own lives. And amazingly, you continue to reinvent yourself. You delight your coworkers and friends with each side of your large personality, which they name as Thoughtful Bob, Inquisitive Bob, Cut to the Chase Bob, Nickname Bob, Hurricane Bob, and Larger Than Life Bob. My favorite for you is simply Buddy. As a man who began a career as a house painter, you have used your drive and passion and created a nationally respected construction and development company with results that shape our architectural landscape. Bob, you are revered for your encouragement of authenticity and self-reflection. Like the mascot of your beloved alma mater, you embody the perceptive, wise, and ever-questioning characteristics of the temple owl. Many of us have quivered knowing that you were getting ready to ask that brilliantly slaying question. And no, it's not 600 yet. You are an inspirational cheerleader for the college, dedicating yourself to getting to know the students, the faculty, and the staff to make everyone feel special. In addition, you have personally led the charge in creating and funding scholarships for students at this college while espousing and expanding the college's reputation. When Bob knocks at your door, you answer. With a new eSport team, your long wished for mascot, the PCAD Peacock, is established and will endeavor to dominate so that you can strut with pride. Your love and commitment to Barrett and your family is unmatched, and by extension, you have made them our family too. As a leader, serving as a chairperson and long-serving member of the Board of Trustees, you generously offered your time, talent, treasure, recognizing that artists are a critical aspect of a thriving world. You inspire us to try and live up to your example. For all these reasons, and so many more, on behalf of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, I present you, Mr. Robert A. Brandt, Jr., for the college's most distinguished award, Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. The Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design wishes to recognize Mr. Robert A. Brandt, Jr. with this distinctive resolution to honor his leadership and vision. Whereas, Bob, you have served as the, board of, the chair of the Board of Trustees of the College, Pennsylvania College of Art and Design for nearly two decades, whereas you are a model of integrity, wisdom, and compassion, whereas you successfully built a nationally recognized business that literally changes landscapes, where you are a mentor for generations of employees, their families, and where you serve as an exemplar of what it means to be a passionately curious and purposely driven man.
Now be it resolved, the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design hereby gratefully acknowledges your many accomplishments. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees acknowledges your inspiration and example to service of this college. Be it further resolved, the Board of Trustees fully endorses you as a recipient of the Doctor of Humane Letters approved by me, the President of the College, and also gratefully recognizes you as Trustee Emeritus. Duly adopted the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design on the sixth day of May 2020, Robert A. Brandt, Jr., by the authority granted by me, by the Board of Trustees, in recognition of your significant accomplishments and inspirational leadership, I confer upon you the degree of Dr. Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights, privileges, distinctions thereunto appertaining and token for which I present you this award. I further cause you to be invested with the doctoral hood of the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Congratulations. That's okay. I appreciate it. Mr. Brandt. And just like that, you're a doctor. <laughs> Anybody feeling poorly? <laughs> Meet me in there. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Good morning. I'm Bob Brandt, a longtime supporter of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, and you've already heard all that. I am both humble, humbled and honored to receive such special recognition as both honorary degree doctor of humane letters and trustee emeritus. I'd like to turn and thank my fellow trustees in the college administration and faculty for placing their trust and confidence in me indicated by these awards. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very appreciative. <clears throat> I would also like to thank the entire college community for allowing me the unique opportunity to be part of this unique and special art and design education institution. So listen, unfamiliar with an honorary degree, I did a little Google research and uh, find out that I'm with a very impressive group of people. For example, in 1996, a small college on Long Island called Southampton College awarded a doctorate of amphibious letters to Kermit the Frog <laughs> for the great work he did in his lifetime, well, he's still alive, for the great work that he has done uh, in working with children. In the past, I've referred to Pennsylvania College of Art and Design as a community jewel, an institution to be held up as a pillar of our community. But as I take a longer lens to view the college's impact, I really see it as a national jewel, an institution that really does have coast-to-coast -coast reach. And I couldn't be prouder to play a small part in helping achieve that stature and having a front row seat to see all the greatness that this institution is part of. In a short 40 years, students, their families, professors, the administration, trustees have successfully built and continue to develop a first-class degree-granting art and design college with an impressive group of graduates who have left a positive impact on our world and will continue to do so for generations. And now you, 47, become part of that group also. So to you guys... In the current vernacular, you're referred to as creatives. And I think it's a very appropriate term. As you've already shown yourself, your family, and the college that you have what it takes to commit four years of your life, invest heavily in your future, 
and successfully navigate the rigorous learning required to be granted your degree today. You should be very, very proud. You've achieved excellence along with a, a degree to prove it. This is something no one, no one can ever take away from you. It's a permanent marker, place to acknowledge your commitment and dedication to the pursuit of engaging and comprehensive creativity. As you all know, there are many situations in today's world that are crying out for a solution. And this is a call we can all accept. To get there, creativity is going to be required. You're now degreed creatives. Go out there and creatively address every one of these challenges and use that Pennsylvania College of Art and Design education to successfully help move the world forward. Congratulations on your amazing milestone in your lives. I'm sure it is one of many, many more to come. So go leave your mark. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you and go Peacocks. Thank you, Dr. Brandt and Chairperson Carter. This year, we have the pleasure of honoring another remarkable person in presenting them with the Honorary Doctorate of Fine Arts. I'm personally pleased to be the one that presents this honor to Ms. Heather E. McGowan. Ms. McGowan, would you please come forward? Members of the Board of Trustees, graduating students, faculty, staff, guests, I'm pleased to present Ms. Heather E. McGowan as a candidate for the honorary degree. This is Pennsylvania College of Art and Design's most distinguished award. Heather, we're delighted to honor you today. You are an in-demand visionary and global thought leader, transforming the ways in which we think about the future asserting a primacy of human potential and connection to an incredibly rapidly changing world. You are a fierce advocate for education and the creative process, as well as a passionate promoter of lifelong learning. You help empower and encourage students of today for the work that has not yet been invented yet. You are comfortable in ambiguity and teach others that true creativity arises from a place of not knowing and learning to adapt to reach our full potential. You offer insight and actionable steps when we face uncertainty. Your design education from Rhode Island School, Rhode Island School of Design and the Babson W. F. Olin Graduate School of Business blends personal acumen and entrepreneurial thinking to create clarity in a turbulent sea of information as you distill what's necessary to empower and inform. You are devoted to authenticity and a champion for the community, working to elevate, enlighten, and create sustainable prosperity for others. As an advocate for embracing vulnerability you are redefining the importance of globals, creatives globally. And on behalf of the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, I present to you Ms. Heather E. McGowan for the college's most distinguished award, Doctor of Fine Arts, Honoris Causa. <laughs> Heather, by the authority granted to me by the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, and in recognition of your significant accomplishments, your visionary thinking, your advocacy for human-centered work, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Honor Causa, with all the rights, privileges, and distinctions thereunto appertaining, and token which I present you with this award. I further cause you to be invested with the doctoral hood of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Additionally, the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design wishes to recognize you 
with this distinctive resolution to honor your creative leadership and vision. You, Heather, are a premier thought leader whose work empowers today's thinking to intentionally prepare for tomorrow. And whereas you are an internationally acclaimed visionary whose ideas inform global audiences and inform leaders and strategists, and whereas your own trajectory of learning, unlearning, and relearning as you create your own unimaginable career path demonstrates to our graduates how they can craft their own lives. Now be it resolved by the Board of Trustees at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, hereby gratefully acknowledges your many accomplishments. And be it further resolved, we wish to acknowledge your inspirational example for our students, for our college, and further endorse you as a recipient of the Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa approved by me, the President of the College. Duly adopted this May the 6th of 2022. Congratulations. think two geeky kids from Norwell, Massachusetts would be sharing the stage to celebrate an incredible educational opportunity and leadership that we had. I'm thrilled that you're here, Heather. Graduates of the class of 2022, today's ceremony message was created especially for you by Dr. Heather McGowan whose design background in entrepreneurial education has shaped the minds that takes data visualization and future casting to a level that makes her one of the most sought after international global thinkers. Ms. McGowan, please come forward to present your presentation to our students. Hey there. Um, President Moa, trustees, faculty, staff, students, soon to be alumni, families, thank you very much for this distinct honor and the opportunity to address you here today. So I make my living as a keynote speaker. I travel all over the world addressing audiences about the changing nature of work. But this is my first commencement address. So, to get ready for it, I listened to all the commencement addresses out there that I could find on YouTube. And then I reflected on my own graduations and commencement addresses, and I asked everybody I ran into the past two months what they remember most about their commencement address. They had one thing in common. No one remembered their commencement address. <laughs> and that fact made this task a whole lot less daunting. So I've organized my remarks in three parts. First, I'm going to give you some practical data, the kind of stuff they don't tell you when you start your education that might be informative now. And then I'm going to give you some conceptual insights from my work, the kind of stuff that I do when I'm out there traveling around giving keynotes. And then I'm going to end with some emotional perspectives, you know, the kind of insight a commencement address speaker is supposed to give you. So first, I graduated from Rhode Island School of Design with a degree in industrial design on June 5, 1993. I had a whole lot of ideas about who I would be and what I would do, and I was wrong about most of them. That was 10,551 days ago. That separates where you sit to where I stand. And I don't know much, but I want to know one thing. Nobody had keynote speaker, motivational speaker, on their bingo card or possibilities for me. My wife is in the audience, my mother's in the audience, my dad and my family's watching from home, and I recently found out, just before I came up here, that my junior high school principal is watching. <laughs> and I know, Dr. Goldman, you had no idea I'd be doing this. So I can say with certainty, your future is likely beyond your imagination today. And don't worry about it. 
The future will appear before you. Here's some statistics that I found alarming when I discovered them and then liberating when you kind of process them. First, statistically, you won't work in the field of your major. Less than 27% of people do. And for art and design, it's even less. Although I question the in your field and how narrowly they define that. But does that mean your education today wasn't important in the four years you just spent and the money you now owe? Absolutely not. <laughs> when I look back on how I live my life, how I do the work that I do, and how I invented this career, it all comes back to my education from Rhode Island School of Design. I also know this, you will fail. Nobody talks about that. You'll lose jobs, someone will break your heart, you won't get into a graduate school that you want. We don't have time to inventory my failures, but trust me, you will fail. And all that really means is your path will deviate from whatever you have in mind today. But I also know this, you fought some really strong headwinds to come here today. Because let's face it, high schools in the United States do not encourage creativity. They do not encourage explorers. They do not encourage design. There's no statistical exam for creativity. We myopically focus on testing you to prove you can, what you can do, which will soon be automated. So look at, let's look at some, this from a different perspective. Here's a continuum between social emotional intelligence and cognitive intelligence. That's sort of your ability to answer things and then your ability to feel and make sense of things and then a spectrum between convergent thinking and divergent thinking. Now, convergent thinking is finding the right answer to a structured or known problem, and divergent thinking is problem finding and framing, asking questions, questioning the question. Now, kindergarten and Montessori school are out here. We are encouraged to explore your ideas, or process your emotions, ask how and why. And high school and too many of our higher ed, higher ed institutions are down here, which is what I call the will it be on the test mentality. And from my research, all the workforce development skills gaps are here. Sure, we need foundational knowledge and fundamental literacies, but we also need people who can explore, who can be propositional thinkers, who can question the question. So you have resisted the pull into the what and staked your exploration into the why and the how, and that will make all the difference for your careers and for us as a society. I also know this. Critiques have prepared you for the challenges ahead. You've had the challenge and bravery to propose new ideas, and the humility and the vulnerability to submit yourself to feedback from your faculty and fellow students. You then incorporated that feedback in an iterative process in the messy process of creation. Well, when Thomas, Thomas Edison was on his pursuit of figuring out the light bulb, he got picked on a lot, and he said this, I've not failed 10,000 times, I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. And that made all the difference. Now, to jump into the conceptual role for a minute, the slowest rate of change for the rest of your life is today. And that's been true for probably a decade as the velocity of change has accelerated. We're now in the greatest velocity of change in human history. Then enter the pandemic. And that change rate accelerated by two, three, four, five times as fast. What does that mean? We need new modes of thinking. We need new mental models. We need people who can explore, who can navigate in the VUCA volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world, which you've been trained to do. So let's understand how our brains work to understand it a little bit differently. Our brains work in two modes, exploration and exploitation. Fundamental, like simple animals do this as well. They explore to find a source of food, then they'll deplete that source of food until it's, they'll go back, so <laughs> they will um, search for berries in a bush, for example, and they will explore to find the good berries, and they will export that source of berries until it's depleted. Well, turns out that's, way, that's the way businesses in the entire world work as well. We explore to find a new business model, solution, idea, or need. We translate that need into a piece of value, and we scale that piece of value trying to reduce the risk until it's been replaced by a better solution. But here's the thing, that time of exploration or the S-curve used to be much longer. The time between the start of exploration and the end of exploitation used to be much, much longer. For example, when President Mole and I were growing up, because he's about my age, Walkman was the cool tech toy. Well, it took 40 years for the Walkman to reach 400 million units. The iPod did that in 13 years, and the iPhone did it in three. So what does that mean? We need new products, new services, new business models, new ideas at a faster and faster clip. 
We need more folks who can work in exploration. Um, Simon Wardley, who's a strategist I met in Australia when I was giving a talk, explained it to me like this. Yes, there are these three phases, but there are also three types of thinkers. There are explorers, settlers, and town planners. And most of our systems of education and our structures of work are designed to create and reward town planners. You folks are explorers. That's what's going to make you much more valuable in the world. And that brings me to a quote I ran across from President Lincoln. President Lincoln was addressing Congress in 1862. It was December 1862, a month before he signed the Emancipation Proclamation that freed the slaves. The country was torn apart by civil war. And he said this, the dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty, and we must rise with the occasion. Lincoln was always really specific in his words. He didn't say rise to the occasion, because when you rise to the occasion, you're rising to a structured and known problem to address it. When you arise with the equation, you're formulating the question and the answer at the same time. That's what you folks are uniquely equipped to do, and that's what we need at this moment in time, because we got some challenges ahead of us. We have the pandemic, which historians will look back and refer to as a plague. Plagues reorder society. The 1918 flu gave us the Roaring Twenties. The bubonic plague gave us the Renaissance. I think we stand at a very interesting opportunity to reorder where work fits in our lives. We have a climate crisis. We have geopolitical instability and soon a refugee crisis. We have rising income inequality. We have the velocity of technology change, which we're seeking to adapt to. We have a labor shortage that shows no sign of abating, and we've got polarization, political polarization in this country. Each one of these is a daunting task, but I'm a belligerent optimist. I see in there really interesting opportunities for creativity, really interesting opportunities for your generation to pick up the mantle that too many other generations kick down the road. And when I look specifically at your majors, animation and game art, yes, you guys can make games, you can make media, you can make all sorts of interesting things, but you can also do education and training that helps people really understand the changing world in an interest way. You could be designing the metaverse, the world that Zuckerberg thinks we're going to live in. Illustration, you understand storytelling and communications. You help us understand things in new ways. Photography and video, the tragic death of George Floyd would not have ignited the Black Lives Matter movement without that video. That video made the inequities no longer something we could deny, and it changed the world. That's the largest sustained political pro uh, protest in history, the Black Lives Matter movement. In fine arts, you help us understand, you provide context for things that we can't put into words, and neurologists now think you actually change our cognition, you change our understanding of the things around us. Graphic design, you help us navigate online and in, in real life. When I graduated, graphic design was, you know, logos and brochures, and it was just starting to be digital. Now that we live in a, an immersive digital world, graphic design becomes an essential way that we navigate in an entirely new language. Soon you'll have uh, graduates in live and experience design will be designing the interactions and experiences we have in the virtual and physical worlds. So to sum this really up, we need your creativity and your bravery to build us all a better future. Now for the emotional part of it. I just made a plea for you folks to change the world for us, and that's how you make your living. And now I want to talk to you about how you think about yourselves. So there's three questions I hate. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you, what's your major? And what do you do? They're absurd questions. You ask young children what they want to be when they grow up, when the world is changing so fast around them that likely anything they pick won't be there or will look entirely different. Most people don't work in the field of their undergraduate major. And when you ask folks what they do, you pigeonhole them into how they apply their skills and knowledge today. Prior remarks told you that you'll probably have 16, 17 different jobs across five different industries. Resist the temptation to be defined by a single occupation. So if actuaries are right, you folks will live somewhere between 80 and 100 years. That means, if I'm guessing your age correctly, you got about 65 years ahead of you. Uh, most of us recognize that our lives fall into chapters, which means I'm estimating you have 10 more chapters ahead of you. Thoughtfully prepare and draft those chapters. It's entirely up to you. Now, I was inspired by a TED Talk I saw with David Brooks talked about the difference between resume virtues and eulogy virtues. And it's kind of odd to talk about eulogy, but that's how you sum up a life. 
That's why you sum up what accomplishments or impacts or meaning you had on the world. So when you live with a resume mindset, you focus on your living. You focus on how things work. You focus on external success. You focus on acquisition of money, attention, possessions, time. When you focus on a eulogy life, you question, why are we even here to begin with? What internal intrinsic value do I have? Who do I love? Where do I give back? Where do I create community? And this is where I'm encouraged by your generation. Because prior generations did this. They looked at your graduation and they said, OK, I got a job. And that job is in, say, Lancaster. And I have a, a loved one or a partner. I'm going to start a life, so I got to get a second job. And then we got to figure out where we're going to live. Are we going to rent? Are we going to buy? Are we going to have kids? Do we need to think about school systems? And then where are those places that we belong? It could be houses of worship. It could be bars, restaurants, dog parks, gyms, country clubs, whatever you're into. And then out of that, your community sort of accidentally forms. And if we've learned anything over the last 785 days, which is how long it's been since the World Health Organization declared it a global pandemic, you folks are putting community first. A lot of folks are resisting, saying, I want my life to be as important as my living. I want to prioritize community. And maybe that will be in Lancaster, maybe it will be in Pennsylvania, maybe it will be in New England, or maybe it will be further out in the world. And then I'll think about where I want to live, what kind of climate I want to live in, urban, rural, what kind of places I want to belong, and then how does my job fit into that? I think that's the reordering that's taking place today. And so as I close my remarks, I want to sum it up with three quotes that try to kind of uh, summarize the advice I tried to impart today. So first, I encourage you to embrace failure. You know that from the critique method and how you've been trained. And in the immortal words of Nelson Mandela, there's no passion found in playing small or setting for life that is less than the one you're capable of living. And then we do need you to build that better future. And the words of Pulitzer um, Nobel laureate Hermit Simon, to design is to devise a course of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. We can all agree, I aimed to inventory a few situations we could elevate to preferred ones. And then emotionally speaking, in the words of Mary Oliver, tell me what you plan to do with your one wild and precious life. You've got 10 chapters ahead of you. I encourage you, congratulations to the class of 22, 2022. We are all rooting for you because your success is all of ours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heather. I'm now pleased to welcome Todd Snovel, Vice President of Student Affairs, to introduce our class of 2022 student speaker. Good morning, members of our Board of Trustees, President Mola, faculty, staff, families, honored guests, and most especially, members of the PCAD class of 2022. Good morning. I am honored to introduce our speaker from the PCAD class of 2022, fine art major, Aubrey Maurer. Aubrey, please join me on stage. Aubrey has been described as a visionary artist and a motivating presence in the fine art department. Her current work is inspired by the beautiful surroundings of her home in Schuylkill County, Pennsylvania. Her pod-like sculptures and organic vessels are crafted from natural clay that she excavates from the lands connected to her home and family, a process that has become a powerful and meaningful conceptual component of her work. Admiring what she describes as the subtle beauty of the unknown and the uncharted, her work focuses on themes of nature, home, and the cycles of life. According to her professors, Aubrey has a rich and thoughtful studio practice. She often leads by example and is a powerful presence in the studio. Additionally, 
she has excelled in her liberal arts coursework by engaging in creative exploration across disciplines. While at PCAD, she has worked as an intern at Foreshoe Interior Design. And after graduation, she will continue at Foreshoe as a junior designer. She is also pursuing artist residency opportunities as a next step in her creative and professional development. It gives me great pleasure to congratulate Aubrey and her family. Welcome to the podium, Aubrey. Good morning, guys. Um, I'd like to thank the administration, faculty, and professors who provide teaching endless guidance. To our fellow classmates who have honest criticism had led to growth. And finally, to our families for their unwavering support for the professions we have chosen. It's been a long time coming for the graduates. I wish you luck and let luck be on your side. The harder you push yourself, the wiser your work. Eventually, luck follows. As we are encouraged to push ourselves, and create new ideas every day at school. As we leave the cinder block walls behind and enter the world, we need to find the inner motivation and search for new ideas that lead us to new possibilities. As bright and creative people, we are called upon to generate ideas and solutions for all our lives, live a spontaneous life. The creative work we make reflects ourselves even if it seems crazy to everyone else. It's what makes us different. So I applaud each and every one of you because life and art is stressful, ambitious, and fascinating. If you listen to your inner voice and follow it courageously and learn how to trust the inner voice, the possibilities are endless. When we start our careers in art, we have no idea what we're doing. It seems terrifying at some times, which can be a great thing. People know what they're doing, know the possibilities and impossibilities. As artists, we do not. We should not be confined by the rules of what is, and what is and is not possible in the arts. The rules were made by people who had not tested the bounds of the possible by going beyond them. Every day, I hope everyone here today pushes the boundaries and lives a generous life. For artists, they make work out of the materials of their lives while they're living it. This generous, generousness of their lives guarantees an authenticity of their art and the generousness rises from an honest individual experience. Stay on track, make your art. Do the stuff only you can do. Live an independent life. The one thing you have that no one else has is you. Your voice, your vision, your story. If your desire is to explore greater than your desire to screw up, you're on the right track. Learn to create art by creating art. Focus on what matters to you. Stay on track, keep moving forward. Enjoy the ride, because it's the ride that takes you on some remarkable and unexpected places. Live an honest life. Decide to do the best in the future for yourself. Do not make art just for the money. Make art that you're proud of, even if it doesn't turn into money. At least you have the work at the end of the day. The things that excite you, that you want to bring in existence, will never be regretted. I leave, leave the world more interesting for your well-being. I close the quotation from Damien Hirst, an English artist and entrepreneur. Make art, make good art. It's always a struggle, but it can make you happy when you pull it off. There's no better feeling. It's beauteous, but it always could be about the hard work, inspiration, sweat, and good ideas. I wish you all with all my heart an authentic, courageous, and adventurous life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aubrey. And it now gives me great pleasure to welcome to the podium my colleague and my friend, Dr. Carissa Massey, the provost of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, to recognize the recipients of several academic awards. Thank you, Vice President Snavel. Good morning. We are here together. This is so exciting. So we're going to first uh, announce and present a series of student awards based on academic excellence. At Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, departmental awards are determined by the chairperson and the faculty within each major. 
The Outstanding Student Award is intended to recognize a senior whose studio and departmental work has consistently been realized on the highest level and to acknowledge professional attributes required of successful working artists and designers within their fields of study. The chairs from animation and game art, fine art, graphic design, illustration, photography and video, and liberal arts will help present this year's Outstanding Student Departmental Awards. The Dean of Faculty and Academic Affairs will present the award for highest overall GPA. First, for the departmental awards. Students selected for these awards will receive a certificate and a cash award. The language on each certificate states, like a circle, the pursuit of excellence has no end. Pennsylvania College of Art and Design celebrates and recognizes your commitment to academic excellence, dedication to your craft, and determination to reach your highest potential as a leader and a creative. For animation and game art, would Natasha Warshawski, Chair of Animation and Game Art, please join me in presenting this award. <laughs> animation and Game Art and interactive entertainment are the most pervasive and popular modes of connection, influence, and communication in today's fast-changing world. This field encompasses a vast array of careers, including animation, 3D modeling, visual effects, motion graphics, video production, gaming, and more. Professionals in this field are well equipped to meet the demands of a diverse and expanding job market that is increasingly changing and impacting the ways in which we live, interact, learn, connect, and heal. I am pleased to announce that the outstanding animation and game art student for the class of 2022 is Daisy Brooks. Daisy, please join us on the stage. Congratulations, Daisy. And now for fine art. Would Ms. Becky Blosser, Chair of the Fine Art Department, please come forward and assist me with presenting this award. A working fine artist has traditionally been thought of and functions independently. However, as we continue to witness the impact and power of fine artists working in industry, the community, and connecting with other fields, they are becoming deeply valued and hired for their collaborative nature as they offer visual and creative skills and solutions to challenging problems. Whatever the work, the fine art discipline requires the artist to be effective in communicating and leading others. As our understanding of the traditional model of the fine artist continues to evolve, it is their lifelong passion that supports evolving goals and desires that manifest into their work of their personal vision. The outstanding fine art student of the class of 2022 is Aubrey Marr. Aubrey, please join us on the stage. Congratulations, Aubrey. And now for graphic design. Would Ms. Pamela Barbie, Chair of the Graphic Design Department, please come forward and assist with the presentation of this award. A professional in the field of graphic design must be able to produce work that effectively meets the communication needs of others. Successful design must balance concept, style, craft, research and analysis with meaningful and arresting delivery of information. For designers, the ability to combine multiple, complex, or even the simplest of ideas into a visual tool is and will continue to be the hallmark of the best, brightest, and most successful designers of today. The outstanding graphic design student of the class of 2022 is Kelly Fan. Kelly, please join us on the stage.
Congratulations, Kelly. And now for illustration. Would Mr. Robert Young, Chair of the Illustration Department, please come forward and assist with the presentation of this award. <laughs> illustration is the quintessential heart of storytelling through images. Illustrators rely on traditional media and sophisticated technologies to reach out to viewers. The backbone of concept and execution within the field of illustration include drawing and research combined with an in-depth understanding of the expressive capacities of animate and inanimate objects. The outstanding illustration student of the class of 2022 is Alicia Groff. Alicia, please join us on the stage. Congratulations, Alicia. And now for photography and video. Would Eric Weeks, chair of the photography and video department, please come forward? Thank you. Technological advances in photography and video have made this art form accessible to everyone. Professionals in this field must commit to mastering and keeping pace with technological advances while working from the perspective that is only one element in achieving personal and commercial image making goals. This ability to function creatively on both levels at once has become the criterion of a successful contemporary uh, photographer. The outstanding photography student at the class of 2022 is Kennedy Toomey. Kennedy, please join us on the stage. Congratulations, Kennedy. And now for liberal arts. Would Michelle Fogel, chair of the liberal arts department, please come forward to assist in delivering this award. The courses and minors offered in the liberal arts department enhance students' exploration of the creative process through academic inquiry and active learning. They emphasize that earning a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree requires the acquisition of critical thinking, research, visual analysis, and communication skills that are essential to artists and designers as they evolve professionally and personally within the framework of contemporary culture. The outstanding liberal arts student of the class of 2022 is Anthony Rudrow. Anthony, please come forward. Congratulations, Anthony. And now the award for academic excellence. Linda King Brown, co-chair of the liberal arts department and dean of faculty of academic affairs, will you please join me in presentation of this award. The college is always proud to honor the graduating senior who has earned the highest overall grade point average college-wide. This is a notably difficult achievement at PCAT. Earning the highest overall GPA at the college requires a lot. It requires a strong and rigorous and consistent command of a wide range of visual, conceptual, and verbal talents and a focused ability to maintain intellectual energy at very high levels while in studio class for 20 to 30 hours a week for four years. We understand that rigor. Many of our students represent this commitment to academic and art artistic excellence, but today we're recognizing one. The 2022 graduate with the highest overall grade point average is Kylie Heileman. Kylie, please join us on this stage.
Congratulations, Kylie. <laughs> and now for the next part, Mr. Snavel, will you come back to the podium to present the next series of awards? Thank you, Dr. Massey. Let me find my right page in the script. Go. All right. The Mary Colleen Heil Vanguard Award, named in recognition of the college's second president, who led this institution for 26 years, honors a senior in the graduating class who has consistently demonstrated ingenuity and achievement in their chosen major. The academic chairs have determined that through leadership, a strong work ethic, and dedication to excellence, this student will continue to creatively influence the fields of art and design beyond just their own field of study. The winner of the 2022 Mary Colleen Heil Vanguard Award is Aidan Thackeray. Aiden is an artist who works and thinks in interdisciplinary ways using many media, illustration, alternative process photography, textile design, and artifact creation. Her thesis work navigates themes of childhood, <laughs> memory, self-identity, and her place within her family as the youngest of six children. Aiden is a force in Lancaster, both on and off campus. At PCAD, she has served as president of the student chapter of the Society of Illustrators, was a founding member of Core Gallery, and has served as a student worker in the Library and Learning Commons. Alongside her studies, Aiden worked as a life enrichment assistant at Homestead Village Enhanced Senior Living, and is currently an in-house graphic designer for her mentor, mentor Timbrel Kayati, founder and designer of Kiati and the Cultured Workshop. An illustration major, Aiden is described by faculty as self-motivated, eager to take on new challenges and projects, a helper, and a community-minded student who collaborated with the Center for Creative Exploration and with Garden Spot Village to curate an exhibition titled Zamesi, bringing the Lancaster community together through the arts based around the idea of finding togetherness in the midst of an isolating pandemic. After graduation, Aiden will pursue a master's degree in art education with a K-12 certification at Kutztown University. Aiden, congratulations. Leadership is not about title nor designation. It is about impact, influence, and inspiration. The Founders Award for Excellence in Leadership is named in honor of the seven original faculty members who founded this institution. It was through their individual and collective vision, passion, and leadership that they created a distinctive and individualized environment for students to study, learn and thrive within an art and design educational community. These women and men through hard work, collaboration, innovation and drive founded today's college in 1982 with thoughtful engagement, rigorous focus and grit. Like our founding faculty members who represent the highest ideals of true leadership, today we recognize a truly dynamic individual it became evident very quickly that one student fully embodied impact, influence, and inspiration throughout her academic and co-curricular journey here at PCAD. An illustration major, this graduate exhibited and gained accolades for artwork and projects both on and off campus throughout four years at PCAD. Along with her academic success, this student has flourished as a student worker, an organizational leader, and a visionary groundbreaker. She has supported the Core Gallery, worked for the Division of Student Affairs as a community assistant, and served as a student member of the college's Presidential Committee on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. 
This graduate was also one of the founding student leaders of Black, the Black-led Artist Coalition, which was created to build a sense of community, continuity, and belonging for the college's BIPOC students. The students' curatorial work with Black and Core Gallery have been featured in articles in Lancaster newspapers and through the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce magazine. Much of this student's classwork has been devoted to crafting a portfolio of illustration for editorial markets, specifically addressing issues surrounding housing access, inequity, and gentrification. The student is actively now pursuing postgraduate opportunities for internships and jobs, including at the Met and a fellowship at Business Insider Magazine. For demonstrating visionary leadership and organizational effectiveness, for advocating for the value of everyone in the PCAD community, and for fostering collaboration that encourage all of us to think critically and serving as a role model for her peers, Please join me in recognizing the recipient of the 2022 Founders Award for Excellence in Leadership, Delena Jolly. The Trustees Award for Faculty Excellence was established by the Board of Trustees in May 2020 to recognize and reward the significant and diverse contributions that faculty make to the quality of student learning and the sport of alumni. These citations are awarded to faculty who have made significant contributions to students and alumni over a sustained period while meaningfully and positively affecting the overall quality of the college through their dedication. The recipient of the 2022 Trustees Award for Faculty Excellence is Matt Allen Chapman. I I, I obviously need more adjectives after that reaction, but you have to stay. Oh no, there are words. As a professor in the foundation department, you get to meet and work with students when they first walk into our building stores. It is this, in the studio classroom that you have the opportunity to show students the many possibilities and opportunities that exist in the creative life they have chosen to pursue. With this kind of tutelage, students and their artistry can grow and the many possible career paths their future unholds their future holds becomes more cl clear which in turn builds motivation and persistence as the foundation year concludes the rising sophomores enter their majors their foundation professors when they watch them grow over the next three years as a respected professor you continue to be invited to serve as a mentor to look at students evolving work to be asked for technical guidance and invited into student senior spaces for critiques or to participate in the end of semester reviews. Matt, your artistic goal is to create visual representations of abstract ideas. I have to wonder what a visual representation of this conversation might look like. The college is fortunate to count you as an alumnus of the class of 2008. You exemplify the best of our mission to our students. Professor Chapman, you are as reliable as the sun and perennial as the seasons. You are an authentic and true leader, never wavering in support of your students. You, uh, your work as a distinguished artist and as an entrepreneur further showcase the leadership of the exemplary teacher. We thank you. Now you can applaud.
The Trustees Award for Staff Excellence was also established by the Board in 2020 to recognize and reward exemplary performance of staff who consistently excel in their positions and demonstrate integrity with a strong commitment to the mission of PCAT. The recipient of the 22, sorry, 2022 Trustees Award for Staff Excellence is Natalie Lassick. Do we see her? I hear she, no, just jump, come on. <laughs> Be creative. I'll keep reading. Who in the Lancaster community doesn't know and admire our very own Natalie? Natalie represents all that we look for in a colleague. Likewise, she epitomizes our collective value of student-centered education through her role as director for the Center for creative exploration. She is a kind, thoughtful, intelligent, and inclusive visionary who considers everyone's dreams and aspirations in her development of curriculum, communities, and partnerships. There she comes. Not only is she student-centered, but she is community-centered, and her work is perhaps the best embodiment of what it means to mentor as her work supports artists and communities from their dawning years as an artist through their golden years of retirement. Natalie exemplifies what it is to live a creative life and to use opportunity to create meaningful change in our Lancaster community and in the world. Anyone who has had the opportunity to work alongside Natalie will tell you she is a true champion of the arts and creative advocacy and that she thinks everyone should have a chance to express themselves, no matter how goofy or weird it might be. Pennsylvania College of Art and Design is incredibly fortunate to have such a thoughtful leader in the community and an empowering creative ambassador to our Lancaster communities. Congratulations, Natalie. Notice I'm at a different podium. What does that mean? It's time. Thank you, Chairperson Carter, and congratulations to all of the award recipients. At this time, it is the purpose of this event, the conferring of the Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees. Would Dean of Faculty and of Academic Affairs step forward and assist us with the presentation of the Class of 2022 recipient of the Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees? And there she is. Look at that cart. That cart has your diploma. Will the 2022 Bachelor of Fine Arts candidates for animation and, and game art please rise and come forward as instructed by the ushers? The candidates for Bachelor of Fine Arts in Animation and Game Art are Daisy Brooks, magna cum laude. <laughs> Skylar Rain Cordiano Mooney. William James Garrett, magna cum laude. Eris Marinos. Natalie Beth Martini. Ian Charles Mimnall. <laughs> 
Samantha Price. <laughs> Alexandria J. Rapp, cum laude. <laughs> Daniel James Tedrick. Will the 2022 Bachelor of Fine Arts candidates for Fine Art please rise and come forward? Isaiah Kendall Bates. Adelaide Brianne Bean. Kylie Jordan Heileman, summa cum laude. Cassandra Erin Cole, cum laude. Ren Martino. Aubrey Lynn Marer, cum laude. <laughs> Callie Brooke Morton, cum laude. <laughs> Jamie Elizabeth Villardo. Will the 2022 Bachelor of Fine Arts candidates for graphic design please rise and come forward? Christina Nicole Clementi, magna cum laude. Mars Irene Keefe. <laughs> Madeline K. Norris. <laughs> Kelly Fan, summa cum laude. Jose Ramon Rosado. <laughs> Chase Rusinko. <laughs> Darlene Cedro. Alex Spangler. <laughs> Will the 2022 Bachelor of Fine Arts candidates for illustration please rise and come forward? <laughs> Jay Amen. Cum laude. <laughs> Kristen Hosanna Bear. <laughs> Brittany Bolig. Steven Colicchio.
Alicia Lauren Groff, cum laude. Sophia Lane Hauk, summa cum laude. Delena Simone Jolly, cum laude. Natalie Ann McNew. Kadir Nassim Moultrie. Yamalet Orenko. Henry Aiden Rhodes. Anthony Howard Rudderow, summa cum laude. Aiden Elizabeth Thackray, summa cum laude. Jerome Charles Tominski, magna cum laude. Ali Townsend, cum laude. Will the 2022 Bachelor of Fine Arts candidates for photography and video please rise and come forward? Woodrow W. Clapper the Fourth. Nichelle E. Morris, cum laude. Emily Michelle Reif Snyder, magna cum laude. Nicole Stolzfus. Cheyenne Snow Tobias Cum Laude. Kennedy Haley Toomey, Summa Cum Laude. Congratulations, class of 2022. Round of applause for you. President Mala, I have the honor of presenting these graduates who have completed all of the courses in the prescribed curricula as recipients of the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts. Will they please rise? President Mala, the class of 2022 is now ready for the conferral of degrees. Thank you, Provost Massey. Graduating class of Pennsylvania College of Art 2022, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts with all rights, privileges, distinctions thereunto appertaining to this incredibly honorable degree. Again, please join me in congratulating 
the class of 2022 at the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Now, I've been asked by the graduates for an opportunity to acknowledge and thank those special people who have given them this support and encouragement and who have enabled them to reach this important milestone. The class of 2022, please remain standing. Turn and find your family, friends, and loved ones. And now is time to express your gratitude. Thank you, families. We know the journey for many of you has been challenging, but we are incredibly proud of these men and women who are about to take on the world. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Megan Caruso again, Bachelor of Fine Arts graduate from the class of 2009, chairperson of our alumni council and trustee to the college to formally induct you as PCAD's newest alumni. Congratulations and greetings, PCAD graduates. Today, we are here to celebrate your incredible accomplishments and this remarkable college. I'm overwhelmed by how fascinating and talented you all are. And PCAD alumni are truly amazing. We are creators and creatives, makers, imaginers, educators, innovators, historians, researchers, entrepreneurs, activists, fixers, beauty makers, designers, and more. We practice every aspect of art and design, and we've activated our creative education throughout the nation and the world. We work in museums, education, government, business and industry, science and technology, and with the communities we are most passionate about. We are impacting diverse fields in science, medicine, entertainment, education, technology, and engineering, to only name a few. We are influencers. We ask people to see, think, consider, and be moved. We hold the mirror to reflect. You will always be part of the PCAD family and are about to join the ranks of the 1,500 plus PCAD alumni. I invite you to continue to connect with PCAD professionally and personally. You have a lifetime membership in our elite club, an enthusiastic invitation to our future alumni events, exhibitions, our programs, and our gatherings. Continue to share with us your successes. It is your vision and success that will continue to make our special college a better place and more beautiful place. Remember to share hashtag PCAD alumni in every article, artist bio, interview, and media you can. You are PCAD's future. Now, as an alumni of, a, of this very fine college and being authorized by President Mola, I now have the privilege and honor to formally induct you to the Alumni Association of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. Graduates, you may now rotate your beret to the left. And so it shall be. Welcome, PCAD alumni, and congratulations. Thank you, Megan. 
And before closing, I want to be sure to invite each and every one of you to our incredible senior show and thesis exhibition. A special preview of the show just for family and friends begins at 4 p.m. and will run throughout the weekend. Congratulations again to the class of 2022. Thank you, Dr. Barbara Altman and the incredible team here at Franklin and Marshall. Thank you, Stray. Thank you, Benchmark. And most importantly, thank you, faculty and staff from PCAD who made this entire weekend possible. I officially adjourn the 40th commencement of Pennsylvania College of Art and Design. And thank you. Thank you, graduates. Thank you, family and friends, for this momentous and celebrated occasion. And thank all of our friends and family who are watching. We applaud you. You're my oyster, my oyster. Faculty, Marshal Justin Phillips, will you take the flag? Will you please remain in your seats until the processional has ended? And I will see you all at four. We now conclude commencement. <laughs>